I got some good news and some bad news about my SE exam that I just took. The good news is I passed the first part, the vertical exam. Huzzah! So that is an eight hour test I will not have to take again. The bad news is that I didn't pass the second part, the lateral part. So I will have to take that exam again and therefore I do not have my license yet. So today I wanna to focus on my process on how I get through failures and how I overcome them so I can get through the next part. Why am I talking about this? I think it's important because you don't really hear too many of your fellow engineers. You don't really get to see too many of their failures. You see a lot of their licenses, whether it's a PE, SE, GE, you see all their fancy titles and that's all you see, but you don't really see all the hardships that they went through and they don't really talk about it because no one really talks about their failures. And I think it's important, especially for us engineers to at least have a framework on how to deal with that, not just from a problem solving perspective, but a mental perspective too, because a lot of us tie our worth to these exams. And when you fail these exams, it often feels lonely, especially if you don't have anyone that's failed with you or you took it with some of your other colleagues and they all passed, maybe you didn't, and then you start doubting yourself. So this is the stuff I wanna talk about today. I'm Matt Picardle, I'm a licensed civil engineer in California, and I practice structural engineering. I'm gonna be going over the three-step process that I go through every time I face a failure and how I overcome it. Let's jump into it. Step number one, when you learn that you failed your exam, is to give yourself permission to just feel crappy. When I got my test results back and seeing that unacceptable score that I got, that really sucked because that basically said, you know, I didn't get my license this time. Gonna have to try again. And it sucks, my heart sank. I'd have that feeling of letting the people that supported me kind of, kind of felt like I let them down. I wasn't as smart as I thought I was or I wasn't good enough to be an engineer. You know, all those thoughts start coming in, especially right when you get those results. And for me, I knew I was having those thoughts and I just let myself, you know, vent. That's what I always do. I just confirm those emotions and let myself just feel sad because it sucks. But I let myself, you know, feel sad just for a couple days knowing that, you know, I couldn't sleep that night. I stressed eight for the next couple days, binge watched Big Bang Theory, caught up on that. Started playing some video games like Final Fantasy 14, stuff to get my mind off it and time to just be aware of the thoughts that, you know, I kept saying to myself especially the negative ones. And it's tough as engineers, you know, a lot of our identity is tied to how smart we are uh, to these exams or your testing. And getting a test result back that says that you didn't pass, I mean, that's literally telling you that you weren't good enough. And that's okay, everyone feels that whenever they face failure, at least in the beginning. So take note of all these negative things that you're saying to yourself, feel sad, feel pissed off, feel whatever you need to feel. That is step one and don't do that for too long or else you're just gonna be permanently sad. Let's move on to step number two. Reflect on what you did wrong and what you can do better. This is a time to review your results. Maybe you were able to get a feeling, maybe they sent you some of the test scores. You can see what your weaknesses were, what you got wrong. And it's a time to look back on how you study for it. And you have to be honest with yourself. I know for me, I personally made it a priority to study for the first part of the test. And that paid off because I passed it, but I knew I did put some of the last minute studying to the second part of the test, which I didn't pass. I just simply ran out of time and underestimated the amount of time it was to, to study for that and do all those practice exams. Were there, was, were there things that I thought I knew, but when it came to test day, I didn't think it, I didn't, know it as well as I thought I did. And for me, writing those things down, making note of those topics that I can definitely improve on and things, maybe practice problems that I wanna re-review when I'm taking it next time so I can really strengthen those up. And I know for me, I personally fell behind on my study schedule. I knew that. I thought I was gonna catch up later, but it was a lot tougher to, to catch up when I was behind. So definitely a lesson learned for me. And also taking note of the way you studied. I know some people like to do self-study, some people like to take classes. I personally like to take classes and courses, but I know that typically works for me. Maybe I can add in some more self-study to supplement my, my course studies on the subjects that I'm particularly weak in. 
and vice versa. And step number three, implement and schedule your game plan. You've taken all this stuff from step number two, you found out what your weaknesses were, the areas that you need to improve on, and now you have to implement a plan on how you're actually gonna do that. For me, I'm gonna be taking some extra supplemental problems that I can do to strengthen my topics that I'm not too good at. And I am blocking out my schedule next time on my calendar because if I didn't put it on my calendar, sometimes I'd miss a day or skip a day to do to not do any problems and then I would just fall behind. So I'd really need to be a lot stricter on that, at least for me. And I always write these down on my notebook just so I know that I don't forget all the stuff that I did wrong, all the things that I can improve. So when a time, when it comes to studying in the next couple months, I wrote all those things down and the stuff that I need to improve so I don't forget. And I'm gonna give you a bonus, bonus number four. And I think this one's really important because even though, you know, after you, you're you done sulking and you figure out your game plan and what to improve, those negative th thoughts are still gonna be coming back at you, you know, every now and then, and you don't want that to get you down. So. These are my tips to, to get through that. So all those bad stuff that you said to yourself in step number one, I always make a mental note of those and I come up with a counter for all those things. So whenever I'm feeling down, like I said, oh, you didn't pass your, your SE license on the first try. I feel bad about that every time I think about that, but then I always come back with a, a counter for that. And I always tell myself that. And in that particular case, I know there's a lot of structural engineers that I look up to. You know, they have their SE license. They're some of the smartest people that I know. And you wouldn't know it from talking to them, but it's taken them multiple tries to pass their SE. And it's refreshing to know that because, you know, it makes me notice that no one's gonna care that you didn't pass the first time. Once you get your license, once you achieve that goal, no one's gonna look back at your failures. They're only gonna see your success. And that really in the end, that's all that matters. And that's what you should be focus on, focusing on, the end goal and not your failures. And another negative one that I have is, oh, you didn't pass the first time, you're not a good engineer. And that's the thing that I've been talking about that a lot of engineers tend to put a part of their self-worth on that test. And if you don't pass that test, you think you're a bad engineer. And a lot of us do that, even though we don't want to admit it, you know who you are, I'm talking to you. We get sad and depressed and we feel like, you know, we're falling behind in our career, or maybe you're not cut out for engineering because you didn't pass this exam. And it's common to feel like that. So the important part is to always counter it. Whenever I have that thought, you know, these tests that we take, especially in the US for the FE, the PE, or the SE, for those civil engineering licensing exams, a lot of those are meant to cover a breadth of topics, not really too much if you're an expert in one particular topic. And if you didn't pass, it's mainly because you were probably not exposed to that subject before, or it's something that you're never ever going to be doing at work. So it's not that you can't learn it, it's just that you haven't spent enough time practicing it or you weren't even exposed to it. So always have your counters whenever those negative thoughts come back to you. And know that you're not alone. A lot of people fail these exams. You might think you're alone because no one wants to talk about when they fail their exams. Except me making this video where thousands of people can see it. But I know it's going to help you. Learn from your mistakes, keep going, keep studying, and you will pass it next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day, a great career, and a great life.